Almost all maps in Team Fortress 2 have some kind of interesting feature to them. A frequently used area that gets overlooked because of how busy everyone is. Or a wonderful scene showcasing a mapper's artistic vision. Here's a video dedicated to these spots. While it doesn't apply to every map I'll be talking about today, while making this video I was reminded of Errant Signal's video about social spaces in TF2 compared to its then competitor Overwatch. I bring this up because I think it's these spots that make the maps of TF2 so unique, being an official or custom map. But today I'll be focusing on the maps in the game. If I looked at the custom maps as well, I could be here all year and more. I asked on Twitter and YouTube for some recommendations and got quite a lot of responses so thank you for all the feedback. Sorry if I missed your comment, there were so many to go through. A lot of people mentioned the resupply room in 2 Fort in the 2 Fort basement. It is a bit of a curiosity. It's a tag along from the days of Team Fortress Classic and Quake Fortress. I guess it's part of the soul of the map. Another spot brought up is the sewers. Many wacky hijinks have occurred in these sewers over the years. The aforementioned social spaces definitely apply here. And of course there's the 2-4 intel room. What more do I have to say? You get a good view of this spy base type place. And there's some old computers chugging away back here too. It's almost the perfect engineer turtling spot. Shriek brought up a few. Shriek, Shriek, I'm going with Shriek. Dust Bowl Stage 1 Spawn has a missile base inside. The Fountain on Youth on Lazarus that opens up when the round is won. Victory. The water heals you, by the way. Conga, conga, conga. The Watchtower in Watchtower. It has breakable glass for some reason. Might be the only spot with breakable glass now I think about it. And a whole heap of others I can't squeeze in. But the one that stands out to me is the secret room underneath the control point on Sawmill. It's visible on every version of the map but easiest to see on the capture the flag version due to the lack of control point covering it. While we're at Sawmill, I've always liked the intel rooms on this map. Kinda claustrophobic and hostile with the water floor and tight hallways. Like an opposite of the 2-4 intel room. They also mentioned the waterfall and extra building on red side. Hmm, never noticed that. Speaking of rooms underneath points, this area and gorge underneath the final point kind of surprised me the first time I saw it. It's so detailed but I've never really noticed it until about last year. While staying on gorge I really like this glass cabin area as well. It's a nice cozy spot to set up a sentry nest and have a good view of the action. Rocket PG mentioned the lodge that is the second point on altitude. And yeah this is pretty interesting with the raised platform area and lower cellar type area. Also it's a lodge so it's gonna be cozy anyway. There are these long tunnel drops in CP granary that you don't really see in maps. Back when TF2 first came out, it was my go-to strategy to sneak past the enemy team and set up a sentry nest inside, with a teleporter pointing out towards the drop. I was actually very glad take a lot. Ticklots brought this up, one up because it was a place I also had in mind. Double Cross has the giant alert board from Meet the Spy in the Intel Room. It will light up depending on what is happening in the map too. Also as Chair mentioned the little courtyard is just kinda here linking up to the sewer as well as the area behind the sniper battlements. A few brought up this back section of bad water behind the building near point B. Lem mentioned the boiler room as well. Interesting areas that seem to not get used as much as the others in an otherwise busy map. I feel this back area and the connecting buildings over here tend to get overlooked. Quite a few times I've managed to build an engineer nest around here while Blue capped and move on to the next area. 
It always takes a while for anyone to find me. Good fun. The Shack on Dust Bowl Stage 2 is what got me started making this video. In the early days of TF2, this was always almost the de facto spot for a sentry nest. Nowadays it's mostly ignored as it's kind of a death trap. Quite a shame as I find it rather cozy to camp in here. Mercenary Park got a few mentions. The vents near the last point lead to quite a nice little quiet area of peace within a cave with a small opening to the outside world. It's kind of relaxing. I also like the old PC hard drive noises the computers make in the room. Kind of weird comparison, but they sound a bit like the quake grenade projectile after it bounces off something. Also in the first area, there's this room underneath Blue Spawn. My theory is it was originally another exit for Blue Team that was sealed off and turned into a generic room. When the map was first added, it was fun as a Red Engineer to make a nest here and camp or Blue Captain move on to the next area. But sadly it's so well known now, everyone targets any buildings inside. Well is a bit of an interesting map. There's this attic area filled with details behind the walls. And around the final areas you can run around up on the rafters like a rat. I've always enjoyed being able to do that. There's also a lot of water passages, something you don't see super often in TF2. Bullhammer59 brought up Cough King's underground areas and side street buildings. It's truly a map you go offline and just soak it in. This also applies to District. The Chinese Russians suggested this alcove in the Pit of Steel's last point. For whatever reason you can quite happily just stay down here and not die. Apparently it's a good zombie survival spot, but I've never actually played the mode on this map. Two people brought up the basement area underneath Red's first spawn on upward. It doesn't see too many fights, more used for quick passages for spies. A few people brought up this lower section around the last point of Frontier where you can get some environmental kills. The pit opens up when the cart gets closer too. I also like the side path near red second spawn that closes up after blue caps the nearby point. Sadly you cannot place buildings here after the point is captured. Anita Bath brought up the islands on Sujin that no one really uses. They're just kind of here and you can stand on them. And the meadow around Swiftwater's point D. Speaking of Swiftwater, a few others brought up the nearby garage with the sniper deck and one-way door. I guess it feels a bit safe here if you're on the attacking team. Also sometimes a train goes past nearby and I love trains. Snivy von der fuck, my apologies was another poster who did a big info dump of map places. A few of these I've brought up when I was making the map fact videos like the secret rooms on District and the disco room on Pier. What caught my eye though was all the man vs machine map spots. I actually didn't even think about including MVM maps at all so this was good to see. This includes the Judgment Shed at Cold Town, the Sundrise Building in Decoy, the Empty Ditches at Big Rock, a lot of unused pathways around Rottenburg. I think these are to give spybots a place to spawn in. Someone else brought the banana at Manhattan but I couldn't find the comment. Another two Snivy pointed out was the TV room on Brickyard and this spot you can enter on pier where the, when the cart blows up. Fox mentioned this metal barrier on Hydro with a vast field behind it. 
In fact, it's referenced in the developer commentary. In the heavily stylized world of Team Fortress 2, however, conspicuous artificiality is a core design principle, and so we can simplify or altogether ignore these explanations without compromising the player experience. Playtesting showed, for instance, that these low fences leading to an empty expanse successfully conveyed the message that the area beyond the fence is uninteresting and out of bounds. Also, I swear this spot was reworked for Meet the Engineer. And finally, Galaxinium, I think, brought up the treasure room that opens up in CP Egypt, similar to the healing pit on Lazarus. And that's as many as I'm willing to look at without this video taking forever to make. There are heaps more spaces I missed or didn't go around to talking about. You can make a whole video series just about some of the stuff in Halloween maps. I'm sorry if I didn't bring up your suggestion. There were just so many I had trouble keeping up. Feel free to bring up any I missed or you think applies. If this gets enough attention, I might make another video.